<clears throat> okay, good morning, everyone. For today's lecture, we're going to discuss about cell injury and cell death. Okay, remember that the, the normal cell is confined to a fairly narrow range of function and structure because it only is dictated by the state of its own metabolism, differentiation, and specialization. Ibig sabihin, uh, each cell has its certain functions no? na, ano lang yun, na limited lang sa kanyang capacity. Halimbawa, kung squamous cell siya or columnar cell siya, kung ano lang yung function niya, yun lang yun. Kasi may sarili silang mundo. The, to maintain a healthy steady state, uh, uh, a health, healthy steady state condition known as your homeostasis. All right? And now, pag itong cell natin, when they are exposed to certain stresses, okay, it can adapt. Okay? Pag yung stress na yun ay within the, as I have said, no, within the, the range of function ng cell, no, pwede siyang mag-adapt. So we have different adaptations. For example, we have hypertrophy. Pwede siyang mag-hypertrophy. Lalaki. Pwede mag-hyperplasia, mag-atrophy, metaplasia. This is the second part of our lecture. No? And yun, no? it can adapt to certain changes, to certain stress sa environment. However, uh, with certain injurious stimulus no, that is beyond the, 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 the adaptive capability of the cell, it will undergo cell injury. And also, pag hindi na siya maka-adapt talaga or prolong na yung, for example, yung stress, prolong na yung stress and the uh, uh, punong puno na yung cell okay so it it is ano na it is deemed to be unable to adapt okay then it will result to your injury or cell injury however itong cell injury natin can be reversible okay when there when there is mild or transient uh, cell injury or uh, exposure to injurious stimuli so it can be reverted back because we have mechanism sa katawan natin that uh, the cells can be salvaged, no? Ibig sabihin, mas save pa siya for, for functional use, all right? However, when there is progressive or severe um, uh, injury, uh, na, wala na. So there can be a reversible injury, the point of no return, in which ano yung limit na lang talaga ng adaptive responses natin ay na-exceed na, no? And therefore, the damaging results or insults for example, deprive yung nutrients, nag-compromise yung mutations natin, magkaroon tayo ng eventually mag-undergo mag yung cell ng necrosis and apoptosis. Okay? So, uh, cell injury is reversible up to a point. Okay? As I have said, no? Kung, kung baga parang tao yan, no? na, na, na sobrahan ka na ng pase, uh, ano yun? Na full na yung, ano na, yung pasensya mo. Punong puno ka na, okay? Ganon din yon. The cell is reversible up to a point, but if the injurious stimulus is persistent or severe, as I have said, the cell suffers an irreversible injury, the point of no return na talaga, and eventually or ultimately it undergoes cell death. All right. So adaptation, reversible injury, and cell death may be stages of progressive impairment following different types of insults. As I have said, adaptation is uh, our part two, no? All right. So next, okay, so, so this one is the relationship among, among normal, okay, adapted, and dead myocardial cells, all right? So itong stain na to is actually um, te, ano yun, tetrazolium chloride, all right? It will stain, okay, it will stain the areas of necrosis or ito yung mga infarct. So tingnan mo dito. There are white areas here. So these are areas of infarction. So this is a case of myocardial infarction. So this is a normal myocyte. This is the heart. Okay. Cross-section ito ng heart. All right. So uh, this is the, the, the left ventricle and this is the right ventricle. Remember, uh, normally the right ventricle is thicker. Okay. Thicker yung, yung wall natin compared to your uh, right ventricle. Now when there is... Uh, adaptation, for example, re in response to increased load, for example, my heart hypertension. So prolonged hypertension, the heart gets to pump more or pump stronger kasi 
it is pushing hard, uh, pushing blood against an increased pressure kasi clogged na or baliit lang yung butas ng ating mga vessel no so there can be adapted myocytes so nag mag-adapt yung myocytes sa changes na yun so it will undergo hypertrophy such as this one so notice na makapal itong uh, left ventricle natin compared to your normal so twice the size halos no all right so that is ad the adaptive response of the normal myocyte however if it exceeds beyond the adaptive capability of the myocyte it will undergo again your cell injury all right pag stretch na stretch na talaga siya may point na talaga of no return or for example meron tayong uh, cells or meron tayong ano tawag dito uh, blood vessel na 90% obstruction na talaga all right so it will undergo cell injury and therefore magkaroon tayo ng reversible myocyte injury resulting to cell death and hence ito may whitish areas dito this one and this sa anterior part no so meron tayong uh, posterior lateral part pala ito all right so meron tayong myocardial infarction and this is a case of a myocardial infarction so that is cell death and this is adaptive response all right so um, the removal of damaged and needed and aged cells through cell death is a normal and essential process in embryogenesis, the development of organs, and the maintenance of homeostasis into adulthood. So, however, when there is excessive cell death as a result of injury in one of the more crucial events in the evolution of disease, uh, it results from diverse causes including ischemia. So, kagaya nung example natin earlier, no, myocardial infarction. So ischemia is a form of ischemia because there is reduced blood flow. Ischemia will eventually result to infarction when there is talaga complete blockage of the blood vessel. And also cell death can be due to infections and toxins. Remember that we have two principal pathways of cell death. We have the necrosis and apoptosis. So we are going to discuss them later. All right. And uh, metabolic derangements of chronic injury may be associated with intracellular accumulation. So we're going still to discuss them as part of the adaptations. Kasi there, kasi there are changes na uh, affected ang metabolism ng cells natin. Therefore, yung production ng substances or certain uh, uh, chemicals no, na nagkakaroon ng accumulation. Okay? And these accumulations can actually be... Uh, ano siya? Uh, pathognomotic of certain diseases, all right? And also, calcium may be deposited at sites of cell death, resulting in pathologic calcification. So that's why yung mga areas na, for example, uh, um, hypertensive cardiovascular disease. So the blood, the blood vessels are, are ano ba, fibrotic yung blood vessels, calcified yung blood vessels natin. And therefore, uh, these patients are prone to develop uh, myocardial infarction uh, in the future, okay? The normal process of aging, aging is accompanied by characteristic morphologic and functional changes in the cells. Again, we're going to discuss them uh, in part two of our lecture, all right? Okay, so now there are different causes of cell injury. So ito yung mga stresses natin na, na, na mentioned kanina, no? So first, we have oxygen deprivation. So a perfect example of which is your uh, ischemia uh, or your hypoxia. Hypoxia muna, no? Hypoxia, ano ba yung hypoxia? Hypoxia is uh, uh, deficiency of oxygen which causes cell injury by reducing aerobic oxidative uh, respiration. So pag wala ng oxygen, ano nang gagawin ng katawan? Depende on the cells, no? Kung ano yung, ano yung mechanism of respiration nila, whether aerobic or whether mag-proceed sila with anaerobic. So meron mga certain cells that are uh, sensitive talaga with oxygen no such as your brain and and even your heart all right so pag nagkaroon tayo ng hypoxia or pagkaroon tayo ng uh, decreased oxygen supply okay syempre magkakaroon tayo yun ng uh, actually ang ano din is ischemia talaga no kasi reduce blood flow pag reduce yung blood flow mo reduce yung oxygen mo kasi it, uh, the blood carries the uh, uh, hemoglobin no and your hemoglobin carries your oxygen all right so an example is yeah, no? ischemia, secondary to either a blockage of the, of the blood, reduced blood flow, or 
pwede din severe blood loss or in cases of carbon monoxide poisoning. So under yan ng oxygen deprivation. Okay, so hindi lang siya basta na na-cut off yung supply but also kasama din yung uh, ano tawag dito? yung severe anemia and also in carbon monoxide poisoning in which uh, carbon monoxide is 200 times uh, ano siya, mas capable siya of binding to oxygen. All right? And also physical agents. What about physical agents? So physical agents are capable of causing cell injury by is either by trauma no? or extremes of temperature such as your burns, yung deep cold or yun, sudden changes in atmospheric pressure, radiation and electrical shock or nakuryente ka na natamaan ka dyan ng, ng kidlat. All right? And also chemical agents and drugs. Of course, there are a list of chemicals that can produce your cell injury. Example of which, yung, for example, yung poisons. No? Ano pa? Poisons like yung arsenic, cyanide, or mercury. Lahat na mag sa, for example, sa oxidative phosphorylation, no? sa mitochondrial transport, electron transport system. All right? And also, hindi lang sa poisons. So this can be also a... Uh, uh, associated with environmental pollutants, no? Mga insecticides, herbicides, etc. And even recreational drugs, no? such as alcohol. All right? So, yun yung mga examples natin dyan. And also, the most common infectious agent, kasi ito yung mga uh, lahat ng pwedeng mag uh, or microorganisms, infectious microorganisms can actually injure your cell. Okay? Varied yung ano natin, kasi iba-ibang biologic agents and different sila ng 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 ano tayo, ng pathogenicity all right next is your immunologic reactions remember that uh, in cases of autoimmune diseases lalo na okay so in which the the, the body produces antibodies against uh, our own self okay our own self antigen no present sa atin so inaattack niya so that's how uh, Immunologic reactions affect or cause diseases, no? All right. And also for genetic abnormalities, again, lahat ng mga uh, may, for example, may mga mutations, mutational changes or genetic aberrations. For example, may meron tayong uh, sickle cell anemia, for example, meron tayong uh, single base pair substitution, for example, no? So pwedeng mag-affect sa cell, mag-injure yung cell mo kasi magsisikal siya, hindi siya magkakere ng oxygen na. And there is uh, 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 prone to develop uh, thrombosis, alright? Kasi hindi yan, hindi yan fluid yung ano natin, yung, I mean yung pag-flow ng dapat disc shape, yung red cell. Ngayon ito hindi na sickle cell, nagkakalsify siya. So uh, it will injure the cell, okay? And also nutritional imbalances, again, uh, kailangan natin ng nutrition to uh, in order for the cell to to grow or in order for the cell to maintain its homeostasis okay so for example mga protein calorie deficiencies kailangan ng proteins for the production of uh, of substances or production of of cellular structures no pag wala kang protein defective or uh, problematic yung cell natin so therefore it is prone to uh, uh, sequestration prone to destruction okay all right okay now this is the progression of cell injury remember that as my step by step yan all stresses and noxious influence exert effects first at the molecular or biochemical level so up to the ano muna yun biochemical alterations muna so ito yung graph natin no so ito yung effect and the duration of injury remember that uh, pag medyo pahaba-haba yung duration, nag increase din yung ano natin, yung changes or irreversible injury. So tumataas din. Pag humahaba yung duration of injury, tumataas yung effect niya sa cell. All right? And this one, this pink area here is the reversible injury in which the, the body or the cell can revert back to its normal its normal state by way of the uh, mechanism ng katawan natin to produce or to to protect the body for example yung mga uh, scavengers natin for the uh, uh, ROS or reactive ox oxygen species no and again yun uh, the first is the molecular and biochemical uh, level okay within the limit cell can repair alterations in the reversible injury if the Injury stimuli a base, ibig sabihin nawala or tinanggal or natanggal, okay? So pwede siya mag-revert back. 
Okay, and then eventually itong yung ultrastructural changes, no? Ultrastructural changes is not seen in the naked eye. Okay? Madami pa siyang hindi din siya uh, visible under light microscope. So gagamit tayo ng mga specialized electron microscope dito to see the ultrastructural changes. And then eventually if the ultrastructural changes are large enough, then it can be seen under the light microscope, all right? And then pag syempre hindi pa din visible yung with the naked eye and for prolonged injury pa din no? ano na nagkaroon na tayo ng gross morphologic changes like for example yung yung example natin kanina yung myocardial infarction so makita natin visibly by the tetrasolium chloride no may meron tayong white areas that are uh, stained okay or not stained pala all right hindi siya na stain yung tetrasolium chloride so lahat ng mga unstained areas are areas of myocardial infarction, yun yung mga gross morphologic changes natin na makikita uh, easily with the uh, naked eye. All right? And notice also this is the cell function. No? So the cell function declines as the duration of injury uh, increases or prolongs. Okay? So next, uh, reversible injury. As I have said, pag meron tayong uh, when the stimulus is, is abated, uh, the cell can revert back to its normal state. So reversible injury is characterized by the functional and structural alterations in early stages or mild forms of injury which are correctable if the damaging stimulus is removed. Okay? Pag natanggal yung stimuli na yan, for example, natinik, di ba? Natinik ka, natunok ka. Okay? So may injury yun, yun sa area or sa cell na yan. Pero pero until matanggal ang ang imo nga ang tunok da sa imo ang lansang okay it will not heal itself no kasi nandiyan pa din yung stimulus niyon so until makuha yung tunok na na okay pwede pang correctable okay pwede pang correctable if the damaging stimulus which is in our example yung lansang or yung tunok da is removed okay so uh, there are two features actually of of reversibly injured cells. So meron tayong morphologic changes. No? Early alterations in reversible injury include the generalized swelling of the cell and its organelles and the fatty change. So fatty change syempre, uh, occurs only in organs that are actively involved in lipid metabolism such as your liver and your brain. Pwede din. No? Kasi, uh, specifically liver talaga. Although yung brain kasi is more on lipids talaga siya. Yung uh, fatty change here is only uh, is particular seen in your liver. Alright? Kasi yung lipid metabolism natin, uh, nandun lahat. Actually, sa liver, madaming kinds of metabolism yung liver natin. No? Different uh, protein. No? Lahat ng functions, actually multifunctional yung liver kasi natin. Alright? So, the two features of reversibly injured cells are generalized swelling and fatty change. Alright? So, so an example of your uh, normal, okay? So this is the uh, morphologic changes in reversible cell injury and necrosis. For example, this is the normal kidney tubules. Remember, cuboidal, no? Okay, simple cuboidal epithelium of viable uh, uh, renal tubules, okay? And then when there is an irreversible, uh, when there is an early uh, injury, early ischemic injury, it will undergo Again, ano nga yung sinabi natin kanina? We have uh, swelling. Okay? Notice, no? Medyo malaki-laki siya. Malaki yung cytoplasm. Okay? Swelling and also there are parang may mga vacuolations, may mga bleb sila sa, sa cytoplasm nila. So this is uh, uh, reversible. It can be reverted back once the uh, nabigyan na ng blood supply ulit or nabigyan ng oxygen ang, ang ating kidneys okay however when there is irreversible injury persistent yung, uh, yung injurious stimuli natin the cells or the renal tubular cells will undergo uh, irreversible cell injury and then eventually cell death so this is uh, an example of your uh, cell death or necrosis remember oh nawala na yung nuclei natin so meron din fragmentation of the cell. So here are the example of your necrosis. Anyway, we are going to discuss later kung ano yung mga changes niya. But remember the cellular swelling, hydropic change, and also fatty change present in your uh, liver. Those are the, the morphologic changes we, we see in reversibly uh, damaged cells. All right? So as I have said earlier, there are two types of cell death, no? 
are two principal types of cell death. We have necrosis and apoptosis, or some call it apoptosis. But uh, allow me to, to, to say it as apoptosis, okay? They differ in their mechanisms, morphology, and roles in physiology and disease, okay? Usually yung, apop, uh, usually yung necrosis is more in the pathologic, no? Although yung apoptosis, pwede sa pathologic, but also in physiologic uh, responses or conditions, apoptosis yung predominant uh, types of cell, type of cell death, all right? Severe mitochondrial damage with depletion of ATP and rupture of lysosomal and plasma membranes are typically associated with necrosis. So remember that, guys. No, pag merong severe mitochondrial damage, na deplete yung ATP, na rupture yung lysosomal membranes and plasma membranes, typically yan of necrosis. So remember that that might come out in the exam. All right. And necrosis occurs more commonly encountered in injuries. Again, as I have said, more on the pathologic side. No such as following ischemia, exposure to toxins, various infections, trauma, etc., etc. So this is the summary of the two of the features of the two types of cell death. We have necrosis and apoptosis. So with regards to cell size, enlarged usually see necrosis, okay? Kasi magpa-fragment yung, yung nucleus mo at the same time yung, yung cytoplasm mo din. However, in apoptosis, we have reduced or shrinkage of the, of the cells, no? Now, we have the changes. Later, we're going to discuss them one by one. We have pycnosis, karyorexis, karyolysis. These are the nuclear changes present in your necrosis. While your apoptosis, there is fragmentation into nucleum size fragments. So, maliliit lang. Kumbaga, bite size yan. So that the macrophages can eat them. And for, uh, for the plasma membrane, again, characteristic of necrosis is your disruption in the plasma membrane. So, meron the... Uh, Merong destruction of the plasma cell membrane in which there is leakage of the cells uh, from inside to outside. Okay. However, in apoptosis, intact siya. No? Altered lang yung structure, pero intact siya. And therefore, uh, ang orientation ng lipids is still intact nga. Oh. All right? And then the cellular contents, again, necrosis is usually enzymatic degradation. And again, yun, this may leak out of the cell yung contents natin. No? While your apoptosis, since intact yung plasma membrane natin, intact yung cellular contents. However, they, they may be released by apoptotic bodies. Yung apoptotic bodies are still confined ba? Meron pa din siyang, I mean pa, contained pa din siya ang apoptotic bodies until makain siya ng phagocytes. Now, with adjacent inflammation, frequently, it is associated with necrosis kasi this is a pathologic response. All right? While in apoptosis, most uh, no, wala tayong uh, inflammation. All right, physiologic or pathologic. Again, as I have said, usually pathologic. See, necrosis. While in apoptosis, pwede siyang pathologic, pero oftenly, it is physiologic. Ibig sabihin ng physiologic, it, uh, ano yan, uh, response ng katawan to eliminate unwanted cells. Okay, and ito din, oh, maybe pathologic after some forms of cell injury, for example, cell damage. All right. Now we go uh, with them one by one. So necrosis, necrosis is a pathologic process that is as a consequence of severe injury. So severe injury in which the cell cannot anymore adapt to the, to the injury. No? So again, it is characterized by, as I have said, the nature of cellular proteins, leakage of contents, through damaged membranes, local inflammation, and enzymatic degradation. So again, based on sa, sa table natin kanina. Okay, so necrosis associated leakage of intracellular proteins through damaged plasma membranes and ultimately in the circulation is the basis for blood tests that detect tissue injury, tissue specific cellular injury. An example of this is your myocardial infarction in which the troponin, uh, creatine kinase, CKMB, etc. Okay, are released from the body at the onset of uh, symptoms, for example, kasi na degrade, so may leakage of these proteins, and then we check the blood kung merong troponin, positive ba sa troponin, etc. And ito yung basis natin ng diagnosis natin ng iba-ibang diseases. Okay? Aside from that, for example, pancreatitis, we check on the lipase kung meron ba. Okay? Okay? Or amylase, for example, etc. Alright? So, here are the morphologic features of necrosis. Again, we have the necrotic cells show increased eosinophilia in H and E stains. Okay, this is due to uh, loss of cytoplasmic RNA. Remember, yung our ribosomes natin, right? So, nawawala yun, namamatay yung cells natin. So, wala na tayong uh, loss of cytoplasmic 
RNA, an accumulation of the natured cytoplasmic proteins. Ito yung nagbabind sa red dye natin, kaya yun sinophilic sila. Okay? And we also have uh, the glassy homogeneous appearance as, I, uh, as nakita natin kanina doon sa, sa renal, renal tubular cells natin na necrotic. Okay? Eosinophilic sila, right? Uh, more, more red, alright? And then the glassy homogeneous appearance. So parang, parang powdered ba? Parang, parang ground glass yung itsura nila. Alright? And then we have myelin figures. Now, the myelin figures, these are uh, large phospholipid precipitates. So myelin figures are actually product yun ng ano natin ng uh, phospholipid precipitates ng plasma cell membrane okay plasma plasma na cell membrane in our cell membranes okay and then the nuclear changes uh, ito yung very particular sa necrosis natin so the nuclear changes uh, appear in usually three patterns okay we have the karyolysis what is karyolysis basophilia of the chromatin may fade and a change that reflects loss of DNA by enzymatic de degradation of your endonuclease. So again, from the word endonuclease, so, so it degrades the nucleus or the endonucleus present in the cytoplasm in the nucleus. Kaya karyolysis or lysis of the of the nucleus. All right. And we also have pycnosis. So uh, this is the second pattern, which is also seen in your apoptotic cell death. Kasi again, di ba? Uh, shrinkage of the cell siya. Pero pag sa nucleus, pycnosis is present in in your necrosis. Although present din siya sa apoptosis. So ano is nuclear shrinkage and increased basophilia. So syempre mas clumped siya. No? Mas clumped yung, yung nucleus natin. Therefore, it is mas matindi yung blue niya. Okay? So parang sa chromatin natin, yung chromatin, di ba? Tsaka heterochromatin. Okay? Pag clumped siya, mas darker staining. All right, then for the karyorexis, karyorexis, the third pattern, also known as the fragmentation of your nucleus. So, yung, uh, yung, uh, yung nucleus natin, makikita mo under the microscope na parang, parang mga dot, dot, dot na lang sila because the, the nucleus has, um, has fragmented. All right? So, there are different patterns of tissue necrosis. All right? Um, and different cells has different uh, sensitivities against uh, the kind of necrosis, all right? So, so ito yung mga basic uh, patterns natin na necrosis that you need to, uh, to, ano ba, to study, all right? First is your coagulative necrosis. So, ano yung coagulative necrosis? This is a form of necrosis in which the architecture of the dead tissue is well preserved, Okay for a span of at least some days kasi makikita mo pa din siya eh okay coagulated necrosis nandun pa din yung architecture like this one this is the uh, kidney no so glomerulus and the tubules so makita mo pa din no? may tubules dito may tubules glomerulus you can see the architecture your parang skeleton niya however this, these cells are already dead kasi makikita mo wala na siyang di ba parang homogeneous yung appearance niya all right eosinophilic and then, although it, this is a scanner view, if you look under the uh, high power objective, you will see the changes in the nucleus. All right. And usually, this is an example. No, there is a uh, a localized, grossly speaking, no, sa gross specimen natin. You can see a localized area of coagulative necrosis, which is usually wedge shaped in this in the kidney. Ito yun, no? Okay. So wedge shaped. So this is called an infarct. All right. So again, coagulative necrosis preserve yung architect architecture natin. All right. However, the cells are still uh, are necrosed or dead cells yung mga yun. All right. That's the first pattern. And the second pattern is the liquefactive necrosis. Again, usually kasi itong coagulative necrosis natin is usually uh, secondary to hypoxia. Okay. This is usually secondary to hypoxia. For example, sa myocardial infarction okay, or renal infarction. So secondary yun sa uh, hypoxia or ischemia. All right? So tandaan nyo yan ha. Pag coagulative necrosis, ischemia sa heart and ibang organs actually that is coagulative necrosis. So very particular itong liquefactive necrosis. Ano naman to? This is a... Uh, a type of uh, or pattern of tissue necrosis in which the there is digestion of the dead cells. So in contrast to your coagulative necrosis kanina, 
na intact or uh, intact yung architecture natin ito hindi na kasi it is turned into a, a, a tissue with a viscous fluid okay pag collection ng necrotic material is known as your past di ba so hindi na siya preserve yung architecture hence parang basa na siya kaya ang liquefactive necrosis and remember also as i have mentioned earlier coagulant necrosis is present in the uh, in ischemia or infarction in other organs except the brain okay this is the brain kasi yung infarction sa brain is liquefactive necrosis so tandaan niyo yan guys ha the basic very ano yan very high yield exam yan all necrosis uh, all pattern of necrosis caused by infarction are coagulative necrosis except in the brain okay ang infarction sa brain is liquefactive necrosis all right next is your gangrenous necrosis this is not a specific pattern of cell death okay usually kasi it is present okay it is ano tawag dito part pa din siya ng coagulative necrosis or coagulation necrosis pero they classified it as uh, as a separate entity na lang because it is usually present in the in the limbs, no, generally the lower legs or even the uh, unique extremities, predominantly mainly sa leg, no, sa mga cases natin ng mga deep vein thrombosis, for example. All right, so yan, ito yung dry gangrene, no, uh, in cases pwede din mechanical trauma ito or physical trauma, mga frostbites, etc. Okay, however, yung dry gangrene yun, pag wala pang superimposed bacterial inflammation or bacterial. Uh, Bacterial infection, pag wala pa, whenever there is al already superimposition of a bacterial infection, so the, page, uh, the, 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 the injured tissue or the injured cells uh, will, ano yan, will appear as wet gangrene or parang fluid ba na medyo mabaho. Secondary to the degrad degradation by enzymatic action of the bacteria and also the attracted uh, neutrophils in the injury. All right. <clears throat> Next is your caseous necrosis. Caseous necrosis is actually a, um, ano siya, it is a, a gross finding. So, pag sinabi ng caseous, ibig sabihin cheese like. So, if you can see, no, parang cheesy siya, no. Uh, Friable white appearance and area of necrosis. Usually, it is very characteristic of your. I know tuberculosis infection. So this one is the lung of a, a case of tuberculosis with an area of large caseous necrosis, which are grossly appear as uh, cheesy, white cheesy debris. All right. Although caseous necrosis is, is not only present or limited to your TB, okay, but they can also be seen in 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 some inflammatory disorders, usually chronic inflammation and granuloma. But the characteristic or the, 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 the prototype of your caseous necrosis is actually uh, tuberculosis. All right. Next is your fat necrosis. So remember, as you can see, they appear as this white, parang chalky areas, no? Secondary to the, the fat saponification. So there's focal fat destruction and release of uh, activated pancreatic lipases. Uh, yon nagkaroon tayo ng necrosis ng fat. So destruction of the of the cells produces fat saponification and ito yung mga parang mga uh, white chalky areas. All right. So very characteristic naman yan in cases of pan pancreatitis. All right. Yung fat fat necrosis. Although it is also present in trauma, especially sa breast, no? Kung not just trauma, uh, pwede mga mass lesions, no? That impinge on the, um, the blood supply, no? Or trauma sa breast, for example, binugbog, okay? So that can undergo fat necrosis in which by, by micro or microscopic examination will reveal the coales coalescence of your adipose tissue, no? Or adipocyte cells. Remember na maalala niya sa histology that adipocytes natin ay na uh, since lipid sila they are uh, dissolved in in our yun sa mga saline alcohol during tissue processing and hence they appear as uh, parang signaturing all right so yung nagko pag nagkoalesce sila so that's uh, an indication of your fat necrosis all right but grossly they appear as this one 
Okay, and the last type of your necrosis is your fibrinoid necrosis. So, bakit siya tinawag fibrinoid? Because uh, it elicits a bright pink amorphous appearance. So, parang fibrin siya, fibrin-like, alright? So, this is usually present. This is the, the type of necrosis present in your blood vessels. So, remember, this is a blood vessels. Meron tayong fibrinoid necrosis, itong amorphous pink substance, alright? Fibrinoid kaya nga fibrin like all right usually this is uh, seen in mga vasculitis natin okay so take note of that now we go to apoptosis so apoptosis is a type of cell death that is induced by a tightly regulated suicide program in which the cells destined to die activate intrinsic enzymes that degrade the cells genomic dna and nuclear and cytoplasmic proteins so ito yung mga uh, kumbaga si apoptosis is the uh, ano yan, programmed cell death, also termed as the programmed cell death because uh, the death is controlled by the action of small genes that is required for normal embryogenesis. Okay, so ibig sabihin ba, orchestrated na, so you are bound to die, blah, blah, blah. So may nakaprogram na siya, no? Parang, parang sa mga movie natin nakita, di ba, yung mga, ano ba, para mga assassin, di ba? They are programmed to to kill, okay? This one naman, you are programmed to die, okay? Programmed cell death, all right? <clears throat> now, uh, as I have mentioned earlier, oftenly it is uh, present in physiologic conditions. So death by apoptosis is a normal phenomenon, okay? Physiologic, no? That serves to eliminate cells that are no longer needed. So yung mga unwanted cells natin. Or as a mechanism to maintain a contrast a constant number of uh, cell population in tissue so for example okay ito yung mga physiologic situation first is the removal of supernumerary numerary cells in excess of the required number during development so for example the webs of the fingers during fetal development diba nako so until ngayon kung may webs ka pa diyan nako matakot ka na baka isa kang pato Okay, isa kang duck, <laughs> may webs yung ano niya, yung paa, okay? And then, involution of hormone-dependent tissues on hormone withdrawal. So, for example, di ba, sa, sa pregnancy, alright? During pregnancy na, ma makapal yung ano natin, yung makapal yung uh, myometry, malaki yung uterus ng pregnant women. However, upon withdrawal, hormone withdrawal, pag nawala na, ng anak na, magbiglang mag uh, liliit siya. Secondary to hormone uh, hormone action, hormonal action, right? Next is cell, cell turnover in proliferating cell populations. Remember that, especially sa epithelium natin, no, sa skin and in the gastric, uh, on the, the intestinal epithelium. No? So, malaki yung turnover dyan because it replaces the cells uh, ev almost every day, all right? Diba? Buling, ta, buling ta every day. Ara, da. So, it's a way of... of uh, it's a way of giving the body a constant number of cell population by apoptosis. And next is elimination of potentially harmful self-reactive lymphocytes. So during the immune system, though, mayroon mga self-tolerance. Mayroon tayong self-tolerance, no? Pero eventually, yung mga self-reactive lymphocytes natin are generally uh, eliminated kasi pwede silang maging source of autoimmune diseases. And then lastly, the death of host cells have served their useful purpose such as Neutrophils in acute re inflammatory response. So yung mga heroes natin sa blood. No? Pag naserve na nila yung, yung purpose nila, hindi na sila babalik. No? They are going to die. Okay? So they die by apoptosis. And lymphocytes at the end of the immune response. So tapos na ako. I have done my part. So I'm ready to die. So hero itong mga neutrophils natin tsaka yung mga lymphocytes at the end of the immune response. So this, this are an example of your apoptosis in physiologic conditions. Again, apoptosis... Although uh, majority of apoptosis is uh, physiologic conditions, however, they can occur in pathologic conditions. So apoptosis eliminates cells that are injured beyond repair without eliciting a host response, thus limiting collateral tissue damage. So ito yung pinagkaiba ng apoptosis compared to your necrosis kasi necrosis mayroon siyang adjacent inflammation that also damages the surrounding surrounding tissue. Now, death by apoptosis is responsible for loss of cells in a variety of pathologic states. Most commonly, it's in the DNA damage, okay? All right? And in the, usually, sa DNA damage, itong radiation and cytotoxic anti-cancer drugs, which can damage the, the, uh, the DNA of the cells, all right? And then also, with the accumulation of misfolded proteins, okay? Meron tayong 
ano yun, parang stress into the endoplasmic reticulum. So, uh, yung misfolded protein, hindi na siya ba na, na unfold or hindi na siya na, na properly properly na tupi ba ng cell. So, misfolded siya. Dapat yung tupi niya ganito. Pero uh, by certain by certain cell injury, no? uh, nagkaroon tayo ng, ng accumulate or ng misfolding of the proteins and therefore it accumulates uh, within the cell and therefore it will undergo apoptosis or program cell death. And also apoptosis can be induced during infections no? such as uh, adenovirus and HIV. And then, Apoptosis may also contribute to pathologic atrophy in parenchymal organs after duct destruction, such as in the pancreas, parotids, and your kidneys. All right. Now, nakita natin kanina yung morphologic features of necrosis. Now we go to morphologic features of apoptosis. Again, okay, ito yung mga features natin that characterize apoptosis. We have cell shrinkage, although it is so present, no nuclear shrinkage natin is present in uh, necrosis. We have chromatin condensation, formation of cytoplasmic blebs and apoptotic bodies. Again, yung cytoplasmic blebs natin, kanina we have seen the, um, the picture of the reversibly damaged uh, uh, cells, uh, renal tubular cells kanina. So meron natin yung in initial na cytoplasmic blebs na yung area na yon. So parang meron siyang parang fronts on the cytoplasm. Okay? Para mga para-para. Alright? Phagocytosis of apoptotic, cell, apoptotic cells or, or cell bodies are usually um, done by your macrophages or macrophages, all right? Now, anong mechanisms natin of apoptosis? So, apoptosis results in the activation of enzymes called caspases. Remember this one, no? Caspases kasi uh, they contain cysteine in their active site and cleave proteins of the aspartic residue. So, wala na silang mapangalan. Sige, pangalan na lang natin. Caspase. Okay? Caspases. And remember that the uh, apoptotic uh, pathway of cell death is the... Uh, there are two pathways now. We have the mitochondrial pathway and the death receptor pathway. Okay? So, we have two different types of uh, uh, cell death secondary to uh, apoptosis. Now, we have the mitochondrial or the intrinsic pathway and the death receptor extrinsic pathway. All right, so ito yung mitochondrial natin and then the death receptor pathway. So remember this picture, no? Pag nakita natin, uh, usually kasi pag uh, mitochondrial or intrinsic pathway, nandun yung BCL2 family of protein. So sila nagre-regulate kasi ng, uh, ng mitochondrial permeability. So once by cell injury, uh, nagkaroon tayo ng, for example, growth factor withdrawal, DNA damage, protein misfolding, magkaroon tayo ng uh, uh, problems with regards to your BL BCL2 effector. So we have uh, destruction or increased permeability of the mitochondria, which will leak out, okay, which will cause the leakage of cytochrome C and other proapoptotic proteins, okay? which will eventually initiate your caspase system, okay? While your death receptor extrinsic pathway is usually receptor ligand interactions of your FAS and FAD, all right? FAS ligand and FAS, or the TNF is a form of TNF receptor, no? This will actively participate in the... Uh, ano, wala na siyang ibang process ba? It will just... Uh, meron siyang adapter proteins called the FAD, no? Which will initiate or which will activate your initiator caspases. And then these two will merge into the common pathway known as your uh, execution or caspases. And then eventually, yan, form siya ng apoptotic body, which will eventually uh, destroyed or uh, eaten by your macrophage. Okay, so this is the intrinsic mitochondrial pathway of apoptosis. No, So this is the viable cell. Remember that BCL2, or viability of the cell is maintained by the anti-apoptotic protein such as BCL2. Remember, pag sinabi mong anti-apoptosis, anti-apoptosis, hindi, uh, hindi siya mag-apoptosis. So anti, it will branch apoptosis. Okay, so they maintain the integrity of the cell membranes and prevent leakage of the mitochondrial protein. So normally yan, i-prevent niya yung leakage niyan kasi anti-apoptotic ito eh. Pero when there is apoptosis, no? For example, merong cell injury. Okay? Anong mangyayari, no? 
So for example, irradiation kasi sabi natin most common si most common itong si ano tawag dito? Most common yung DNA damage in cases of apoptosis, all right? So anong mangyayari is that the insults will activate sensors. Okay? This will activate sensors, base 3 only protein which will ano mangyayari? There is an imbalance of the pro-apoptotic and the anti-apoptotic. So mangyayari is that ma-antagonize si anti-apoptotic and therefore tataas yung ratio or ma-activate yung mga pro-apoptotic proteins natin which are your box and box. So remember, yung palatandaan natin sa pro-apoptotic proteins are your box. Di ba? Pag sinuntok box, oh, pag sinuntok mo, o oh, mabubutas, o oh, magkakaroon ng uh, mitochondrial membrane permeability. So mabubutas yung mitochondria natin and then will eventually cause the leakage of cytochrome C which eventually <clears throat> activate your caspases. Alright? Now this is, uh, the second picture here is your Uh, the extrinsic or the death receptor initiated. So, madali lang yan. So, my fast ligand and my fast, and then my adapter protein known as the FAD, this will eventually uh, activate, okay, activate your uh, group of gas spaces. And then, after noon, the eventual uh, uh, eventual e effect noon is that magkaroon tayo na executioner gas spaces or ma-activate yung executioner gas spaces, both of which will lead to a Uh, a common pathway which will eventually result to your apoptosis. Now, there are also different manners or mechanisms of cell death aside doon sa, <clears throat> sa two main natin, necrosis and ap apoptosis. So we have necroptosis. This is characterized by uh, necrosis and both apoptosis. Pag necrosis, ito yung loss of ATP, swelling of the cell and organelles, Generation of ROS, release of lysosomal enzymes, and rupture of plasma membrane, just like the necrosis. Okay. However, this triggered by signal transduction pathway that culminate in cell death, feature of apoptosis. And next, we have pyroptosis. Ano to? Pyroptosis from the word pyro, fire or fever. No. So it is a form of apoptosis that is accompanied by the release of fever-inducing cytokine IL-1. Okay. Remember that one. While your ferroptosis, naman. This is a form of cell death from the word ferro, no? iron, no? due to excessive intracellular levels of iron or reactive oxygen species that overwhelm the glutathione-dependent antioxidant defenses that cause unchecked membrane lipid peroxidation. So next we have autophagy. Ano yung autophagy? Autophagy is a process so from the root word auto and fat. Okay. Of, oh, auto and phagy, or which means to eat. No? It's a process in which the cell eats its own contents. <clears throat> so, dyan, it involves the delivery of cytoplasmic material to the lysosome for degradation. And cons it is a concerned survival mechanism whereby uh, in states of nutrient deprivation, starved cells live by cannibalizing themselves and recycling the digested contents. Oh my God. So ito pala may cannibalism pala sa ating katawan. No? In cases na uh, survival of the fetus na lang talaga. No? Okay, autophagy is implicated in many physiologic states such as aging and exercise and also in some uh, areas of pathologic uh, processes. Okay, so this is Uh, autophagy, no? So, nag meron tayong cellular stresses such as nutrient deprivation in cases, again, dun, di ba, sa, sa, sa aging, okay? So, mara, wala na na yung nutrient. For example, nutrient de deprivation will activate your autophagy pathway in which it uh, <clears throat> it proceeds through several phases of mechanism. We have the uh, the initiation, nucleation, elongation, okay? And eventually, a double membrane bound Uh, uh, vacuoles or known as your autophagosome will fuse with your lysosome present in the cell. So, syempre, remember, your lysosome will contain your digestive enzymes which will eventually, pag nag-combine sila, fusion of lysosome, magiging autophagolysosome, it will uh, degrade the, the, the contents of the cells. And then, recycling of metabolites, syempre, may mga So, not disassemble na siya. Some of it will be recycled by the cells. Okay? So, for survival mechanism itong autophagy natin. <clears throat> Now, we go to mechanisms of injury, of cell injury. So, cell injury results from abnormalities in one or more essential components of the cell. So, ano yung mga yun? So, the principal targets or the, the, these essential cellular components are the mitochondria, the cell membrane, 
the machinery of protein synthesis and secretion, and the DNA. Pero basically, tatlo lang itong i-discuss natin. So first is the mitochondrial damage. So usually, mitochondrial damage can cause the following. So we have ATP depletion. Remember that ATP is very important no? in the cell metabolism. So, so decreased ATP synthesis and ATP depletion commonly associated siya with both hypoxia and chemical or toxic injury. All right. So anong mangyayari pag pag wala tayong ATP? Of course, yung path, uh, yung sodium pump natin is reduced. All right. All right. Failure of this active transport system cause sodium to accumulate inside the cells and potassium concentrations to fall. So ang mangyayari is that it will lead to cellular swelling. Okay? Okay? Uh, cellular swelling, all right? Next is your incomplete oxidation phosphorylation. Uh, also leads to the formation of reactive oxygen species. So later we're going to discuss very briefly lang. Ano? So production of ROS, all right? Or reactive oxygen species. <clears throat> and then eventually leakage of mitochondrial proteins due to channel formation by pro-apoptotic box and back. Okay, remember itong mga box natin, mitochondrial damage will leak your cytochrome C from the mitochondria and it will eventually activate your caspases. <clears throat> So ito no for example in this picture no decreased oxygen supply so most common siya and also toxins so mitochondrial damage or dysfunctions either by decreased in ATP and increased production of your <clears throat> of your ROS will cause your multiple cellular abnormalities which will result to necrosis Although mitochondrial damage is also present in your apoptosis din no so increased apoptotic proteins itong kanina yung box and back Diba yung anti-apoptotic, yung BCL2, and pro-apoptotic yung back sa kabak. Okay? It will cause in the leakage of mitochondrial proteins and I uh, will undergo apoptosis. All right? Next is your membrane damage. Remember that the plasma cell membrane or the plasma membrane, the cell membrane is a protective uh, structure of the cell. Okay? So when there is early loss of selective membrane permeability, it will lead to overt membrane damage is a feature of your uh, cell injury talaga. Kasi ito talaga yung outer, kumbaga ito yung skin natin. So once na nag-rupture yung skin natin, exposed, so pwede na tayo. Uh, physical barrier ba natin ba? Okay, so once na destroyed yan, ayan na, magkakaroon tayo ng cell injury. And there are several mechanisms that contribute to membrane damage. First, we have ROS, or reactive oxygen species. We have decreased phospholipid synthesis, increased phospholipid breakdown, and cytoskeletal abnormalities. So in this picture, no, <clears throat> ito yung membrane damage natin. First is the generation of reactive oxygen species or oxygen-free radicals. Remember, these free radicals, uh, may target talaga sila no, sa cell membranes by lipid peroxidation. So pag nagkaroon tayo ng lipid peroxidation, remember that the, site, uh, that the cell membrane is composed of your, <clears throat> of your lipid bilayer. So... So when there is ROS or reactive oxygen species or free radicals, so it will destroy your cell membrane and will cause the leakage of cellular contents out of the cell. And hence, it will cause cell injury. And again, decreased uh, phospholipid synthesis. Again, pag sa phospholipid synthesis natin, uh, since decreased yung ATP production natin, remember ATP is responsible for uh, cellular metabolism, lahat ng mga functions ng ng cells natin, including your phospholipid synthesis. Okay? Phospholipid synthesis, part of which is a portion nga ng ating cell membrane. So pag walang phospholipid synthesis, decrease yung phospholipid synthesis, hindi tayo makapag-produce ng uh, intact cell. Alright? And then increase phospholipid breakdown. So secondary to your degradation membrane lipids due to Phospholipases, no? Secondary to injury pa din, okay? Phospholipid degradation. So, lipid breakdown products ng iyong cell membrane. <clears throat> and then, cytoskeletal abnormalities. So, remember that, um, ano tawag dito? The, the, the cell has intermediate filaments, okay? So, ito yung parang nag-hold together yung uh, ng mga structure natin. So, including the, the, the cell membrane. So, yung cell membrane, yung intermediate filaments natin, inihilan nila yan, yung cell. So that intact yung cell, it will maintain its uh, normal shape. Okay? For example, spectrin sa, sa red cell, di ba? 
Kasi pag wala yung mga spectrin, maglolobo yan. Kasi walang humihila ba to make it, uh, uh, to make it uh, disc shape or biconcave disc. Alright? So, same lang din yun. Pag mayroon tayong injury to the cell membrane, magkaroon ng cytoskeletal abnormalities. So, pag wala na tayong, or pag sira na yung ano natin, cytoskeleton ng cell natin, so magkakaroon tayo ng uh, increased risk of the cell to develop uh, <clears throat> swelling and pag extensive yung swelling it will rupture. <clears throat> okay so these are the 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 principal free radicals involved in cell injury, okay? Anyway nandiyan I have I have already uploaded your notes to nandiyan na yon so aralin niyo na lang yan but remember the hydroxyl uh, <clears throat> the hydroxyl and ion it is the most reactive oxygen derived free radical all right so again yung damages lipid uh, proteins so <clears throat> usually kasi lipid peroxidation yan sila although it, this can also damage other other structures such as your your dna okay so this is the generation and removal of ros or reactive oxygen species remember that um, ang reactive oxygen species natin, although it can cause pathologic effects such as your lipid peroxidation, protein modifications, DNA damage, there are certain mechanisms in our own body that uh, could remove or scavenge free radicals. So, ito yung mga removal natin. So, this can be converted. Different, no? So, we have antioxidants, no? So, yung mga, di ba, mga, sa mga tawag dito mga ad advertisements mga vitamins so kailan ng antioxidants yes that's true because uh, antioxidants block free radical formation so kung konti lang yung free radical natin uh, pwede yun ma, ma ma block ng antioxidants no however kung extensive yung damage tapos wala ka masyadong ng antioxidants oh edi pwede mag uh, mag an talaga mag cause ng cell injury so yung mga free radical uh, mga antioxidants natin yung mga vitamins E and A as well as Yung A's, okay? Vitamin A, C, and E. Alright? So, ito yung mga antioxidants natin. So, mechanisms that can scavenge free radicals to prevent or to decrease the production of your ROS. We also have enzyme systems. No? We have the catalase, superoxide dismutase, glutathione peroxidase, alright? Uh, which will convert the, uh, the uh, oxygen free radicals or into, into more harmful uh, substances or madidecompose sila into water. Okay? For example, by glutathione peroxidase. No? So, nandyan sa notes nyo yan yung, yung mga mechanisms of, of, uh, of preventing the accumulation of your, uh, of your free radicals. So, we have, ano yun? Ano ngayon ulit? Antioxidants. We have the enzyme systems, catalase, superoxide dismutase, glutathione peroxidase. Okay. Now, the last mechanism of cell injury is directed towards DNA. So, the DNA damage uh, activates sensors that trigger P53 dependent pathway and it usually arrests in the G1 phase of the cell cycle and activates DNA repair mechanism. So, remember the G1 phase huh, in your histology. If these mechanisms fail to correct DNA damage, P53 triggers apoptosis by the mitochondrial pathway, by the intrinsic pathway, all right? So next, ayun na pala yun. So this ends our lecture. Our lecture next is about cell adaptations in which the cell, ano yun? When there is, uh, when the cell or when the injury is, is not uh, worse or hindi siya sobrang lakas or Ma, ma, matagal so the cell can adapt to it so I guess this ends our lecture thank you prepare for the quiz on Thursday <clears throat>